I do wonder sometimes if there's something wrong with me. Um, I had a perfectly usable browser. I was using Firefox. It was great. It was blocking ads and everything. It just worked. But I decided to switch to Cube Browser. Now, Cube Browser is great, right? But I did just spend the last two hours fucking with it to make it work the way I wanted it to work. All through the back of my mind, this whole time I'm thinking, I chose this for myself, right? I think I might be a bit insane. So I spent, like, well, I had two problems. The first problem was the ad block. Cube Browser's ad block functionality is weird. I was trying to make that work better. That was a really easy fix, but it required just reading documentation carefully, which I hadn't done before. Um, but I, I find reading documentation fun. Number one thing that's wrong with me, I find reading documentation kind of fun. And so reading the documentation carefully, I found out, oh, you need the uh, Python ad block package. So, oh, and Pac-Man has that. Pac-Man Pac SS. Oh, uh, Pac-Man SS Python ad block. Oh, yeah, we have that. Okay, pseudo Pac-Man S and get it. And, oh, now it's only partially working. Oh, because you need to set in your config file that you need it to use. Well, because I wanted to use both the Python ad block package and my custom ad block list that I have, so I have to set it to use both in the config file. That's pretty obvious, like, not really a big deal. But that did take me, like, quite a while to figure out that I had to do, that I had to install the Python ad block package. But that wasn't really the problem. The problem was, sorry, this is a tangent. This isn't really what I want to talk about, but whatever. Um, the problem was, really, that, um, Someone made an, well, what I presume is like an improved ad block for Cube Browser because this is a common problem called JBlock. Um, you can find it on GitHub. If you can get it to work, then, um, <laughs> you know, that's great for you. But uh, I could not get it to work. I spent a while faffing around with it. Um, firstly, the documentation. For JBlock is out of date, and certain things in Cube Browser have changed since then. Certain variables have changed their name, which I had to like figure out. It was very annoying. J whoever runs JBlock, I forgot who the guy whose name it is. Update your fucking doc. You know what? I can update the. What am I talking about? This is a fucking free software project. I should just do it. I should just update the documentation myself and commit it on GitHub. I might do that. Wait, I probably shouldn't though because I still couldn't get it to work, so I was probably doing something wrong, which means maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't submit my probably incorrect documentation, okay, never mind, I might not, I'll look into it, but, um, so JBlock I couldn't get to work, firstly, the documentation's out of date, secondly, it's not very well documented, and thirdly, uh, it just crashes every time I try and run it, uh, like, it crashes the whole of Cute Browser, in order to run it, you have to, you have to, um, clone the git into your config fo folder and then you run a command within cube browser um which i forgot what it like jblock update or something and then whenever i run that j it, the whole browser would just crash and i tried to fuck with it for a while but i couldn't fix it and so i was just like eh, not worth it and then i looked around a bit reading documentation figured out oh you have to install you can install the python ad block libraries and then make it use both that and the custom lists that I have, the custom like ad block lists, and now it blocks ads uh, pretty well. Pretty well. Not as good as uBlock. Most, the biggest problem, firstly, it doesn't block ads on YouTube because YouTube does a bunch of fuckery to try and circumvent ad blocks. It also, I haven't tested it because I don't really watch Twitch. And you can watch Twitch in MPV, same with YouTube, so this isn't really much of a problem because obviously MPV will not show any ads or anything like that. So it's not really a problem for Twitch and MP uh, Twitch and YouTube since I can watch both of them in MPV, but um, I haven't tested Twitch. I'm just saying this because I know that Twitch's ads are very intrusive. YouTube does a bunch of fuckery with their ads, and uh, the Python ad block, all all of the stuff on Cube Browser doesn't work on YouTube. Uh, but that's just one website, and again, I have a workaround which is MPV, so it's fine. The bigger problem, sorry, I'm really my thoughts are very tangled right now. Uh, the the bigger problem is that while it blocks ads, it doesn't sort of like reformat the page the same way an ad block plugin does. So, um, 
you still get like a, a, a square, like a square or like a box or like a, you know, something like, like a gap where the ad would have been. All it's doing is blocking the server that holds all the ads, like the ad server, like, because the way ads work, right, if I remember, if I'm understanding this, is they're not hosted on the page itself. They're hosted on some, on the ad, the server of the advertiser, which is then just sort of showing, loading into the page. And so all these block lists do is block, or it has a big list of advert servers owned by advertisers that, that serve ads and just tells your browser, if you get a request from any of these domains or whatever, just don't, just be like, no, don't give, don't show me that. You're, you're not allowed to come in here. So it just blocks them from sending the data to your browser so you never get the ad showing up, basically. But unlike, you know, uBlock or whatever, it doesn't then uh, fix the, CS the, the CSS so that you never see, you never even see the space where an ad would have been. You just see a gap where an ad would have been, which honestly, I'm okay with. Like, it's, it's a tiny, tiny problem. <laughs> I'm fine as long as I'm not seeing ads. Uh, but tangent, that, was a t that whole six-minute segment of, was a tangent. The real thing that happened was then I spent an hour. So most of that hour or maybe it was even more, was trying to get JBlock to work. And JBlock is just a terrible... It even says in the the readme, don't expect this to just work. Um, I don't know how to make it just how to make it work. So, so yeah, whatever. It's, it's very... You know, it's not fully functional software for the public or whatever. I don't know. But that was a bit fiddling. That was mostly JBlock. Once I stopped fucking with that, it was pretty easy to get everything else to work. The thing that I was trying to do, I, when I was first writing my computer here, let me stand up. This is how we differentiate segments. Isn't this fun? Isn't this cinematography? Isn't this um, mise-en-scene and blocking and all other filmmaking terms? We're, we're rising. We're rising as the story, as the narrative I'm telling moves into different territory. I too move with it into a different physical space. I'm thinking these things through. And the thing about it is you've got to tell them, you've got to tell the audience that. You, you, if you make a movie and you say, every time you have a visual metaphor, you have a character turn to the camera and explain the visual metaphor, that's how they do it. If you've ever seen a movie, that's how they do it in the movies. Um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> what was I talking about? Um, fonts. Something like that? Yeah, fonts. When I was first writing my computer, I tried out a bunch of fonts. Now, on my old ThinkPad, wherever the fuck that is, somewhere buried, somewhere, um, probably down there in that uh, box. There's a box down there. It's probably in that box. Um, back then, I used a font called Hack, which is a very common font for sort of Rice-type people, Linux-type people r slash unix porn type people. Most of them use either hack or terminus. These are like the two really popular fonts. Um, and for good reason. They're good fonts. They're very re readable. They're made for programming, these sorts of things, right? Um, and they look pretty good too. But I, I used to use hack a long time ago. I wanted to use hack on this. I tried it out. And it was all right. I tried out terminus. It was all right. I tried out a bunch of other fonts. I think I tried out probably at least 10 fonts. Um, you know, one called uh, Jet Brains. I don't know. I tried out a bunch of them, but the one I settled on after a bunch of testing is a font called. And I'm going to try my best to pronounce this. Eosevka, Eosevka, Eosevka. I'm just going to call it Eosevka. To me, it was the most readable of all the fonts that I tried. You know, your your I and your your J are very. I mean, is that right? Right? Yeah. Your I and your J are very discernible. Yeah, your L and capital I are very easy to discern discernible. That your capital O and zero are very easy to tell apart. Like all of these are very easy to tell apart. It's very readable to me. I just liked it a lot. Now it grew on me. At first I was like, yeah, this is really easy to read, but it doesn't look that good. But over time I've grown to think it does look good. So I use Eosevka. For every, I use it on my URXVT, I use it on my polybar, I use it in D menu. Do I use it in D menu? Maybe I don't use it in D. I should make it so. I'll, I'll check that in a second. But I use it in everything pretty much. 
everything that I've remembered to make it so that I'm using it in everything. I use it in Matrix or Element, I guess. Um, and I wanted to have it so that my cube browser was using Eosevka for like all the tabs and menus and whatever, because obviously you're going to be typing a lot in a um, like key be key based keyboard based browser. So everything you're typing, I want it to be in the font that I like. I want it to be nice to match my rest of my computer. That took a while. This took an hour to make this happen. Why? Not because it's difficult to do. It's very intuitive. You just go into the config.py. Yes. Cube browser is made in Python. Disgusting, I know. Disgusting, I know. And um, the config file is a Python file, which is actually kind of neat. If you know Python, you can do like if statements and stuff. Not that I know Python, and not that I have any understanding of how to do if statements and stuff. And I could probably figure out figure it out, but um, so it's very easy. You just type the variable and equals font, right? And it worked. You know, you you give it a list of variables. You, you do all the lists of variables. One that controls the tab, like tab font, the error message font, the download notification font, the status bar font. Like you, you know, you, you each one is controlled by a different variable. You just get the list of variables, you set each one to whatever font you want it to be. You could have 50 different fonts for different things if you wanted. Each of them could be a different size and a different, you know, bold, italic, etc, etc. <clears throat> so this is what happened. I sent them all to Eosevka, and it worked for some of them, but not others. And this was very confusing to me, because I did the same thing. I literally could look at the config file, and each of them was the exact same thing. Equals quotation mark or double quotation, Eosevka, close double quotation. That's it. And it worked for some of them, it didn't work for others. I was so confused. I spent ages trying to figure this out. Why the fuck is it working for like the 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 suggestions, like right when you're when you're typing in a command, because it's it has like tab completion and a bunch of suggestions or like hist the same place it shows your history and stuff. Yeah, I'll just show you. here so when you like bring up a, when you like press colon like this this menu this menu was working this menu was in eosevka but like the tabs one and like the hints one like when you go into hint mode like these were in the standard uh default font and all of this stuff and i was very confused like why is some things working and some things not and eventually after a lot of searching i found a on the complete or, or is, is it complaints section on the github for cute browser a discussion from 2017 where someone was complaining that some things were working and some things weren't working in their their desired font and the person who uh the main person who dev who works on cute browser who i believe i forgot what that, but the main person who works on cute browser responded like um actually none of these should be working it's broken in a way that is making it work at all for some of them. Like, not, the ones that are working are only working because of something I did wrong. Really, you have to specify, um, like, you have to specify details about the font. You can't just say, you know, the font Yosevka. You have to specify uh, the font family uh, variables, I think they are. I don't know. I suppose they're variables because they're, yeah. And so... I had to go through each one and be like, 10 point, or 12 pixels, I think it was 10 point that I ended up using. 10 point, or 10 pt, Yosefka. And then it just magically worked. Isn't that the most retarded thing ever? That you have to spe like, it knows the font, because it registers it after you put the, make sure you, it knows what size to do it, and it works sometimes, but not, and this is the dumbest thing, like, come on, anyone can agree that having to go through a config file for a whole hour and search through for a post from 2017 that is the only place that tells you that you have to specify the size of the fucking font to change the font is is stupid. That's not that stupid. But not for one second was I ever 
mad about this. I am not mad about it still, even though I might sound mad about it. I'm playing it up for the video. I'm not mad about it. I had a great time. It was honestly, I love looking through old fucking forum posts from like back in the, well, I guess 2017 isn't really back in the day, but you know what I mean. I love looking at searching through, you know, Google page three and like reading old comments and fucking around with a, a config file and like <clears throat> trying to get something to work which you know and then at the end of the day when you've done it you never have to do that again I will never have to unless I suddenly get really mad at this font and when that does happen if it ever does happen which I don't think it will if it ever does happen I will know exactly how to fix it and you only have to do it once and then you learned it and now it's in your brain And if I don't remember it, it's in a comment. In the, it's in a comment in the config file that I wrote down. I wrote down, uh, re uh, re remember to put the, uh, the size or something like that. I forgot exactly what I wrote, but like this is why I think. Am I? Is there something wrong with me? Like I'm pretty sure on Firefox, changing the font is just you go to settings, you go to font, and you select a font that you want from the drop down menu, and it just works. Like. Now I'm starting to understand why Dotsmite is mad about having to <laughs> having to use config files because you get you have to deal with things like this. But personally, for me, I had a great time. I can't explain to you why I had a great time. I can't explain to you why, but now I have a browser. I can't explain to you why I needed to change the font in my browser. Like it was perfectly readable and fine. Um, can't explain it to you, but. It, it, it is what it is, and it's great, and it's satisfying when it works. You work hard for something, you, you read documentation, you read old GitHub complaints, and you get an answer, and you do research on what the fuck a QT font family is. Still don't really know. <laughs> and then you end up with a browser which matches the rest of your computer in font, and is also very easily readable, which is great because I like being able to read. Like any reasonable person would think this is a stupid system, that you have to go through a fucking config file just to do this, and it's like a hassle. It shouldn't be a hassle. Why should you have to define the size of the text if, you're just, if you just want the default size? Like, and it says in the documentation that it will use the default size if not specified, and that works, but only for a few of them but for the other ones, you have to specify that you want to use the default size. It's very stupid. Why is this fun to me? I don't know, there's something wrong with me. I'm just about to put my selfie stick away, but then I thought of an addendum to my previous point. You know, four years ago, I would not have done this. I would have tried it. When it didn't immediately work, I would have just left it, given up, and probably never come back to it. Or at least left it for like months and just been, just dealt with the, the problems. Uh, this is maybe progression as a human being, learning to be dedicated and solve problems and stuff. Maybe that's why I like doing things like this because it's like, you know, it's problem solving. It's like part. It's like a puzzle game, but you get to reap the benefits of having a nicer font in your web browser. You get to reap the benefits of having cool keybinds that let you do things that you need to do very often. Um, so maybe that's why I like it. Like yeah, four years ago. I would not have stuck with this for an hour just to change a font, and especially when it would, I would, I would have got very frustrated. I never got frustrated, I did not get, I got frustrated with JBlock because it's a shitty piece of software that doesn't fucking work and documentation's out of date. I got frustrated because of that, because that is not a problem I should have to deal with. And neither of this, neither is this, to be fair, a problem that I should have to deal with. But at least it makes, I no, it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> it, it, that, that's a, that's like, the browser just being finicky and just demanding that yeah that it doesn't make sense but i didn't get frustrated at all i i just was like yeah this is just something i do this is just something that i am doing right now it's not like oh now i have to do this because i didn't have to it's just a font on a fucking tab i didn't have to do it you know it's not like oh now my fucking computer won't work unless i do this and this is going to be a pain no it's not that it's you know it's like um Imagine you're playing Minecraft, and you're like, I want to build a giant base. Oh, but now I'm going to have to build a giant... Yeah, but you chose to build a giant base, so you, assumedly you took on part of that is you want to... You, you want the struggle and 
the feeling of overcoming the struggle of collecting all those resources and of building the fucking thing. You know, it's the same. It's the same thing. You don't have to. No one's telling you in Minecraft. Hey, go build a massive replica of the TARDIS or whatever. I just thought of that because that's something I did when I was like thirteen, but it was in creative mode. Um, not thirteen, probably younger than that. Um, but uh, you know, no one's telling you to do that, but you chose to do it, and so when it was hard you like it's not like you get frustrated and annoyed because it was hard you you get you know that's that's just part of the expected experience is that it's not just going to happen instantly and when it does happen instantly it's a very nice feeling but you know it's part of what you signed up for that it was going to be a bit difficult and a bit of a struggle and the answer would probably be a bit stupid that's what you sign up for with linux when something's broken or that's what you sign up for with computers in general is that uh, something's going to break in a really stupid way and you're going to spend a while trying to fix it and then when you finally do fix it, it's going to be the dumbest shit ever that you just missed. Uh, that's what you sign up for with computers in general. And so, you know, as long as it's not something that affects the computer seriously, like, I would get mad if this was, like, oh, my entire fucking computer is broken because I didn't realise that you had to specify a font size. I'd be mad then. But this is not that. This is, And that almost never happened. Like, that sort of thing doesn't happen. This is, you know... Uh, uh, the oh the font in my new in my tabs is is slightly different. I oh I wonder if there's a way to to change that. Oh there is. I'll try that. You know it's like a, it's like I willingly dove into it, expecting this to happen, on some level, and so I'm happy with it. While I'm here talking about my Linux woes, I suppose I should talk about something that genuinely does frustrate me about my computer and that I can't fix because maybe someone I know, for example. There's a guy who sometimes comments on these videos called Install Gentoo. With a name like that, you know that guy knows his shit, right? <laughs> that, you know that's a man of a certain caliber. So uh, maybe he can help me out here. So in BSPWM, right, um, this, this is about window opening order. So BSPWM by default uses a Fibonacci sequence, which is not really Fibonacci, but they call it that, uh, to open windows. So for example, right now I have a term. If I open another terminal, it will open in sort of like this nice Fibonacci golden ratio. If I open another one, it will, again, it sort of spirals and sort of, you know, spirals into infinity. Um, right? That's great. I love that. This is a great layout. I love this layout. Problem being, it's focus dependent where the window opens, unless you select it manually, which is a fucking pain. I mean, it's not that much of a pain, but it's like more key presses than I want. So this works. It will always, no matter what, I mean, I only have, there's only one window to be selected. So the active window, the focused window, is, you know, this one with my config folder, com, doc, some dot file open. Right? And if I open another terminal, it will open. This is great. And as long as I have this window in focus, when I open the next one, it'll be nice and fibonacci -ed. But if I have this window in focus, right, the one to this, the one to the left, I don't know if you guys can actually see this very well. Let me turn the brightness so. up. Better? Okay, so like if I have this window open and I press it, I open a new, a new terminal, everything works fine. But if I have this window focused and I open a new terminal, it opens in the middle of both of them in this weird, unusable, really tall and skinny format to which I then can't fucking move it down there. Like this, it should be what? Alt, like Alt Shift L is gonna, like, I mean, sorry, what is it? It should be like, I mean, Super Shift, fucking hell, man. Super Shift L should move. Or super control? I don't remember what it is. <laughs> super control L? Nope, never mind. Okay, ignore me. Clicking and dragging it doesn't work. I forgot what the fucking... None of, nothing works is what I'm saying. It's stuck in this weird fucking middle format where I can't fucking do anything with it. This is super alt L. No, that expands and contracts it. Super shift L. It doesn't work. Like, I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to be, right? Yeah, see, Super Shift L and K L and H are moving this one around perfectly fine, and this one around perfectly. Maybe it has, is working, and I just can't tell because it's a, a fucking the same. Ta okay, so this is working. Never mind. I'm stupid. I just couldn't tell them apart because they're the same terminal window. So Super Shift L and H work to move it left and right, but I can't Super Shift J and K to like move it down, which should work. It should work, and it, here's the proof that that works. If I open it here, right, now I can happily J and K them back and forth, and, you know, H it over here, and it's all great, right? 
these are all these these are all working fine. It's only when it's opened because I'm focusing on this window. If I open it here, it's stuck in this stupid fucking place, and I can only move it over here. And now I'm always going to have one window that's annoyingly tall, and all I can do is make it bigger or smaller. But I can't fucking you know do shit useful with it, and it's stuck here. What I want is BSPWM to ignore whatever window I'm focused on. I don't care what window I'm focused on. I always want the window to open in the bottom uh, right. No matter, sorry, I suck with left and right. I, this is just a fact about me. Um, but I always want it to open in the bottom right, no matter what, right? Unless I spe specifically specify that I don't want, that I want it to open somewhere else. I want it to always open in the bottom right, no matter what window I have focused. How do I do this? How do I make BSPM, BSPWM always open it in the bottom right, no matter what window I have focused. Please help me. Um, because it's really annoying when I open, go to open something and I have the wrong window focused and it will just open in the middle in that stupid fucking really tall and skinny size that I can't do anything about. And I, it's annoying. It's very annoying. Please help. Apologies if you can hear my computer's fan going a bit crazy. I'm rendering a video. While I'm here asking for help, <laughs> Um, my other thing I request help with is understanding how RSS works. Um, specifically understanding how to format a file so that an RSS reader can read it for YouTube channels. Um, so uh, in one of the recent videos, probably the previous video, um, depending on what, what video this clip ends up in, um, uh, I I was very excited to be very amateurly uh, amateurishly using a Vim macro to format a file, which is um a little cringe editing that, but um hey, it was an exciting time. Okay, you don't get to do that very often. There's not many cases where you need to m do the same operation for you know a thousand lines and a, and you get such a clean solution as just like you anyway. So, um, I, I did that, I have that file now on my computer, but I can't make, I don't know how to make a, you know, like Newsboat or whatever. I installed multiple Newsboat and another RSS reader. I don't know how to make them read it, you know, and like show videos from, from them. Um, I've tried to do research into it. But no one fucking it, it seems to explain it. It's all people who already know how to do it complaining about other, like, talking about specifics, but not talking about the basics of how you format, like, a, 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 a what is it, XML file to make it, make it RSS, make it, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Make an RSS feeder understand what the fuck it's trying to say. Nor does anyone tell you how to, like, make it know what a YouTube page is and grab grab the information from it. Um, because I, I thought that it was just the videos tab. Like if you tell an RSS reader the videos tab URL, it would just read that as a as a as a thing, but it doesn't. Um, I don't know I don't know what to do. So if anyone could help me with that, that would be helpful too. Um, I'm no thank you on Matrix. No thank you of matrix.org server. Matrix. If you want to message me and help me with that. Uh, so, yeah. So, it's around 8.30 a.m. Uh, today I woke up at 4 p.m. Now, it's a little... I need to be awake during the day. To, although I'd like... Not that I want to... But I need to be awake during the daytime. It makes my life infinitely worse because the uh, they haven't well they probably will in like half an hour. Uh that the drillers next door start drilling at nine AM. So it's it would be positive for me to wake up before nine AM every day. At least for a few months, right? until the drillers stop drilling. God knows how long that's gonna fucking take. So annoying. I can't believe that I have to deal with this in my life and I, it's so ridiculous. You can't even let me fucking sleep. What's the point in being a neat if you can't fucking sleep whenever you want? 
some of us are, have fucking brain damage and can't sleep at a reasonable time every day. Come on, account for me, fucking retards. Some of us fucking work nights in the in in the brain pen. Some of us work nights in the brain pen, and we have to be fucking awake all night. Oh, so I'm I'm pretty tired, but I'm not that tired. And here's the thing. Like, I can still get to be awake at night if I simply flip my sleep so that I am waking up at night, right? So if I, like, I'm waking up at, like, 3 a.m. or midnight or whatever. To do that, I simply need to stay up a bit longer. You know, stay up till, you know, 4 to 6 hours longer than I'm currently awake. That would be pretty easy for me to do like I'm I'm not that tired I could I could definitely last four more hours at least of being awake um in order to sort of help push my sleep cycle further forwards to the point where it goes backwards but that's not really the problem here is it the problem isn't whether I could be awake but the problem is the fact that I have nothing to do while awake. Um, <sighs> I tried to watch some anime, but I couldn't really focus on it. I've run out of YouTube videos to watch. Uh, and Mission Impossible 2. Did I, did I mention I was trying to watch all the... I was going to watch all the Mission Impossible movies. But Mission Impossible 1 was not very good, and neither was 2, and so I was like, you know, it was actually surprisingly boring. I, I didn't think Mission Impossible, which I thought would be an action movie, which I guess they are action movies, would be boring, but both the first two were boring, um, did not hold my attention at all. Mostly, I think, due to Tom Cruise, <laughs> who just is, just somehow, I can't take him seriously in anything uh so i have really nothing to do i suppose i could watch oceans 11 that's a film i've been meaning to watch but um the point being i don't really know what to do f for the next four to six hours while staying awake don't think i have enough content to last me that long i don't have enough brain to keep me interested in content to last me that long so So I'm fucked, is the point. Like, right now, I would love to just be like, ah, oh, okay, time to watch an ASMR video and go to sleep. Wouldn't that be lovely? But no. Fucking people next door had to knock their entire fucking house down and rebuild it from scratch or whatever the fuck they're doing using only drills. <laughs> <laughs> only the loudest drills right next to my room. That's their own, that's what they're doing. That's how they do it. They they they're doing all their work using only the loudest possible tools and right next to me. That's the only way they know how to do it. Any other way they have they've never learned. They've never learned in building school how to do that. They only learned how to how to use the most loud possible tools right next to me that's the only thing they know how to do so it's a shame but I guess there's no other way around it um since that's what they know how to do is loudest possible tools right next to my my ears um so because of that it's fucked oh it's so fucking annoying can you imagine me just being able to sleep when I want to fucking sleep why can't I just sleep when I want to fucking sleep? Why is the world built to cause me hell? The only, like, practical solution <laughs> would be to buy a soundproof booth or soundproof my room and sleep in a soundproof place. That's literally the only solution. And that's not a practice. That's, that's way too expensive. I can't afford that. Soundproofing is extremely expensive. 
Oof, oof. Wow. That was a that was a really intense yawn. Anyway, I just want I'm just here to complain. I'm just here to complain that I have nothing to do, but I need to be awake and I have nothing to fucking do. And I can't think of anything to do. And I'm just complaining. My name. My name is No Thank You. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, my name is No Thank You. People normally shorten it because No Thank You is a bit of a mouthful. People normally shorten it to either NTY or No. With a zero or not with a zero. Um, that works well. And when I was making this channel, um, I'm not just going to call it No Thank You 2. I can't call it No Thank You After Dark. It's been done. And there's no way I'm smart enough to come up with a clever name that sounds really cool, like Harsh Noise Pain Slot or something like that. Because that's the best name for a channel ever. Shouts out. Um, so I thought, I'll just do my name but backwards. Little did I think that I would actually have to, you know, I thought I'd refer to this as backwards. I thought I'd refer to this channel as the backwards channel. But, um, if I say, oh, I'm just going to post, yeah, I'll post that video on backwards. No one knows the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> so that doesn't work. So instead I've had to try and pronounce this unpronounceable name, which is, uh, which I normally say, Woynaton. You know, where the K is silent, like in knife or night or no or whatever, right? Like, oi naton, oi kanaton. It doesn't work. It's just terrible. Um, it's a cool idea. Works in text form. Doesn't work in vocal form. But, you know, people call me no, because no thank you is a mouthful. The first two letters. So what if I just use the first two letters and I call, I call this channel UO? UO. UO sounds good. UO. UO. So this is this is UO. That's what I'm gonna call this channel. For short. UO.